Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. Well, today we're looking at Batman issue 36. This is from the more recent run, not the original run. And this is a team-up called Super Friends, which is cheeky and cute, I suppose, if you're 16. It's part one of a two-part story or four-part, I don't even care. This was put out by Tom King and Clay Mann, pencils and covers. I didn't hate it. It was just really boring. I was bored the entire time. Like, when's this gonna pick up? When's this gonna pick up? Stuff happens. It was just all window dressing for what is largely like a 1990s sitcom. So we start out with Superman talking to Lois while he's in Superman outfit, which is, I don't, I don't get this bit. Why do people do this? In a real fight, all right? So Superman and Batman throughout the issue are doing stuff sometimes with their significant other like batman's involved in a fight with some guys in hockey masks who shall remain forever nameless because nobody cares are talking to each other and they're talking about superman being his friend and all this and we hear gordon's name we hear alfred's name all while they're working that is a unprofessional and b unrealistic because while you're in a fight it's hard to hold a conversation superman and lois have some exchanges while he's working while he's not and it's all about they both are hesitant to talk to the other one for some reason and I guess they don't know if they're actually friends which haven't we gotten past this and they're supposed to meet somebody named Dr. X uh Lois is supposed to meet a contact who knows Dr. X Bruce and Catwoman are trying to find out someone named Dr. X E-C-H-S and of course it's a super villain so Catwoman asks if Batman's ashamed of her. He says no. And he's focusing on the task at hand, which is what he's supposed to be doing. And then, uh, of course, we get... It's a strong juxtaposition. Half the page is devoted to Batman, and the other half is devoted to Superman and Lois. Batman and Catwoman are talking incessantly, having this long, drawn-out, pointless conversation, just like Lois and Clark are on the other half of the page. And then, of course, just to be silly... They gotta meet in an elevator, right outside of an elevator, and have this really awkward staring contest, like, How didn't I see you? Superman says, and Batman's like, You took the elevator? Yeah, it's that dumb. This is something that people that don't read comic books think that comic books are cutesy, and they come up with these kind of scenarios. And of course, the bad guys show up, there's two Dr. X's. And both Batman and Superman knock him out with one punch. And there's a big pow! Because it needed that. And Superman says, vengeance is the night. And Batman says, up, up, and away. Because, yeah, that's, that's, that's cute. It's a ha-ha funny, right? Funny? Well, you know what? I thought it was stupid. It's well written. I'll give him credit for that. The, Tom King's a pretty good writer. I just don't care about any of this. This is an issue of fluff. And it was dumb, anyway. Like, why are both of these grown men who are vigilantes and have been doing this for ages so awkward around each other all of the sudden? No, that's dumb. Haven't we done this already, like, 30 million times? I do like Clay Man's pencils, though. I thought he did a really good job. I really like the cover, too. I thought Batman looked really cool. Superman looks pretty good. I thought the art was alright. It's a little a little rough yet, in my opinion, but I think it's got a lot of potential. I think the artist has a lot of talent. So, uh, I like the art, but I thought the story was kind of boring. I can see why this is such a mixed bag with readers now. There are people that are going to like this style of writing, and there are people like me that don't. I didn't particularly care for it. I'm going to give it a few more chances. This is the first part of a story arc. I'll read the story arc through and see how it goes. Maybe it, it'll get better, but I think there was way too much talking about this. This is something that realistically would have been handled in a page or two. Hey, you should call him. Hey, you should call him. No, I don't want to. We'll do it anyway. Okay. Otherwise, it's just a lot of navel gazing you know you're sitting around staring at belly button lint it's a waste of my time that's not three dollars worth of fun and adventure i'm reading comics to escape real life if i want to have a listen to two people argue about whether or not they should call someone i'll find some teenagers and talk to them Otherwise, yeah, these are grown, mature adults. Why is this such an issue? So this is stupid. So I guess they're going to have a double date and be all cutesy in the next issue. That sounds stupid to me. We'll check it out. Hopefully it'll be better than this issue. I didn't care for this one. I know a lot of people will. But it, it really looks like they're just milking page length for a graphic novel and to sell an extra book every month. So yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced this is as good as people are proclaiming it to be but that's just my opinion i do like the art though so if you're real big into the art 
check it out. This might be uh, something worth looking at and learning from. But in the meantime, that'll do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. And be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you in the next episode. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. Today we are looking at Patsy Walker Romance. Oh, I mean Batman issue 37. This is from Tom King and Clay Mann. And it's date night with the super friends. Yay! So we start off with the super duo with their super lady friends going to a county fair gotham county fair specifically and they have to dress like superheroes to get in and then we've got a two page three page thing where they decide th that they have to go in because it took an hour to decide on this so they switch clothes or uniforms specifically catwoman takes lois lane's outfit and just is flirty with the dude so she can get in and lois lane wears catwoman's outfit superman and batman switch costumes and then there's a lot of eating they eat corn dogs they eat ice cream they go in the tunnel of love where lois and clark have a little romantic moment and selena and bruce are making out then they go to the batting cages for some reason because watching superman dressed like batman hit baseballs is somehow adorable i I don't know, this is stupid. Superman's wearing his glasses over Batman's cowl like anyone's gonna recognize him. That, it's, this cutesy crap is dumb. Then we've got, on the opposite side, the ladies are kind of hanging out. And somewhere along the line, Catwoman's got a stuffed cat thing that looks like a Pokemon, I don't know. And her and Lois are passing a flask around talking girl crap and saying dumb stu having stupid conversations then some guy dressed like the question steals lois's purse and batman throws a baseball and knocks him out then they're eating ice cream yay and they ride rides yay and the girls are having a great time and the boys are over analyzing every situation about their lives and there's more eating ice cream Yay! Then Superman and Batman tell each other what a great job they did. And then they go to a baseball diamond and Batman hits a ball out of the park. This was a waste of three dollars. It was stupid. The guys act like complete idiots through the entire thing. Batman complains about everything, which I kind of get because this is a giant waste of time. And yeah, I, I did not enjoy this. It was trying to be cutesy. It wasn't. The girls have that usual kind of like, oh, boys are gross and stupid. Hee <laughs> hee. And the guys were just like, oh, I'm macho. I'm more macho. I was bored the entire time. Like, nothing happens. They go, they have a date night. But I didn't buy this to have a romance book. I wanted superhero stuff. And instead we get these trite, cutesy, overplayed, hackney 90s sitcom crap. This is garbage. I paid three bucks for this. This is this is not three dollars worth of good. Like the art's pretty good. I'll give them that. But again, they played the same stupid joke. The vengeance is the night. Uh, up, up and away type crap. When they're changing clothes back. But first of all, gross. I won't change clothes with someone unless I have to. Like life or death sort of thing. That's gross. Ew. And they make jokes about how they don't wash their uniforms all the time. That's gross. No, they won't do that because they have to have you know. Batman's a hypochondriac for one, so he'd want any DNA or anything taken off of there. So, yeah, I don't know. This was just stupid. I, I don't recommend this at all. Issue 37 is a waste of $3. Issue 36 was a waste of $3. It comes down to, like, cutesy double day. Yay! That's, yeah, this is boring. The cover looks like Superman and Batman have boobs, and it was dumb. It really takes away from, like, the coolness factor of both heroes, Superman and Batman. Like, I don't know. It's just a waste of money. I don't recommend this. I think Tom King is the wrong person to be writing Batman after reading both these issues, but I've got a couple more issues I'll read through and see if maybe it gets better, but if it, this sort of stupid crap keeps up, I'm going to drop this title because it's... This is ridiculously dumb and pointless. I want some action and adventure. I don't want a romance book. But that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. And we hope to see you on the next episode.
Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at Batman issue 38. I thought I'd get caught up on my Batmans. I'm pretty far behind, but after the last couple of issues that I reviewed, I wasn't exactly real eager to do it. So this is written by Tom King with pencils and inks by Travis Moore. Julia Brusco did colors. Clayton Cowell's letters. Tim Sale and Dave Stewart did the cover. Maggie Howell was the assistant editor and James Rich editor. So we start off with this kid finding out that his parents were murdered in some brutal fashion in their kitchen or whatever. His butler calls him Master Bruce for some reason. You're not clear on that at the beginning, but it, they explain it later. So anyway, the kid's all upset and he's talking to Bruce Wayne. Well, there's a couple more murders and this time Batman goes and talks to uh, Zaz because it looks like Zaz's work and they find this letter which uh, apparently the prison guards thought was junk mail so they just let it go through. Okay. And it turns out to be the worst anadrome in the history of anadromes. And there's a little callback to Denny O'Neill, who used to write and edit Batman books. It's a callback in the laziest possible fashion. So then we find some more dead bodies this time. It's Zaz's parents. That's when Batman establishes this definitely wasn't him. Then we find some more bodies. It points to Two-Face, but again, it's flawed and easily figured out that it's not him. But Batman finds Mr. Taylor, the butler, to the kid, and the guy tries to take off. But Batman catches him and gets some information out of him. He confesses that he did the killings. And then Batman cracks the code that this seems almost childish. And he reinterrogates the butler and finds out the kid did it. Or put him up to it rather. So this out of shape middle aged guy killed like 8 people. And framed well known supervillains for it. Well Batman tries to talk to the kid. But the kid tries to identify himself as Bruce Wayne. And it's ends kind of there. It was, it was one of the most mundane mundane, boring comic books I've read in a long time. It was technically well written, much the same way that the instructions on how to assemble my stereo were back in the 1980s. It was technically written well because I understood what it was getting at, but it was incredibly boring. I did not feel any kind of sense of suspense or intrigue or action. It was just sort of going through the motions. It was like watching a reenactment of a crime on a investigation discovery but without the volume or the n subtitles or anything like that it was just it was just kind of like going through the paces and i was like okay this happened that's nice so uh, i was bored i was bored the entire time the art is really good i do like the art style quite a bit they did a really good job on that the buildings look like they're google images like usual but aside from that pretty well done and there's a sneak preview for sideways which i didn't care for but overall it was um it wasn't worth three bucks at all i wanted to pay a dollar for this this was like 50 cents of entertainment to me and that's just because the art was pretty i would pass on this one i'm not impressed with tom king the previous issues i read of his were absolutely stupid and it appears to be a trend but since the wedding issue just came out i wanted to get caught up and wow wow do i regret this this is going to be like pulling teeth if it's going to be this boring so i would skip this one that's my recommendation hopefully the other issues get better as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you like the video, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss future reviews. And we hope to see you on the next one. Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at Batman number 39. This is from the Rebirth series from 2016. And this issue is part three of the Super Friends storyline. Although last issue had nothing to do with this storyline. It was just wedged right in the middle. Well these are sort of, I don't even know how to describe it. This one is with Wonder Woman. She turns on the bat signal for some stupid reason and summons Batman and says they have to go assist the gentleman who has been fighting this horde of monsters in another dimension for thousands of years and they're gonna go give him a break apparently it's his lunch time or something so batman puts on some armor and goes out with one woman and they teleport over there and he teleports to gotham city where i guess he hangs out with catwoman for a few hours and talks about going to see his wife meanwhile batman and wonder woman are fighting giant monsters for a very long time. It turns out they've been there for de a decade at least. While this guy is hanging out with Catwoman. Wandering around the city. It sort of ends there. 
with Batman and, and Wonder Woman about to kiss after 10 years of being alone together and they haven't been banging for some reason. This was not a Batman story. This was a Wonder Woman story that had some guy that pretends to be Batman in it and everybody's mocking him. Catwoman says he looks ridiculous. I thought the armor looked all right. Wonder Woman has to make some comment about how men don't look like warriors. Uh, they're eager for battle with the weapons. They look so tough. It really does not suit your gender, she says. So we got to have a little bit of misandry in there, too. I don't know what Tom King's deal is. Like, does he hate Batman or does he just think that all men are incompetent boobs? Because this was the most uninspiring Batman story I've ever read. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people like Tom King. I think this is boring. Boring. Like, to the point where it's not only not dynamic, but I feel like I'm reading some sort of informational pamphlet that's designed to put me to sleep. Like, is this an MK Ultra experiment of some kind? I don't understand what this is. Now, supposedly Tom King was a CIA operative of some sort. I'm wondering where was he stationed? Tahiti? Because th what is this? This is so boring. You know, when, if you say you're from the CIA or you worked for the, you know, some cool government an agency like that you should have a little bit more dynamic storytelling like you should be you had to have had cool adventures why is that not translating so this was boring i feel like i wasted time and money reading it this is a period of my life i'm never getting back i regret the decisions i made in not only purchasing this but in other aspects of my life now i feel rather sad that this exists in the world and i regret that i paid money to experience this so i am not going to recommend this in fact I'm actively discouraging people from buying it on the fact that it is so incredibly dumb and boring. It had a potential to be really cool, but it was just a lot of snarky comments from Wonder Woman and a lot of boring Batman. I don't know how you make Batman boring. I, I don't understand that. I can't even grasp the concept. So uh, I'm not going to recommend this, like I said. And that is going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future reviews. And we hope to see you on the next one. Is Tom King a male feminist? Someone needs to tell me if he is, because it really looks like it. Hi, and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at Batman issue 40. This is the Rebirth storyline series from 2016, and this is part four of Super Friends, written by Tom King, Jolie Jones interior art, Jordi Belair on color, Clayton Cowell's letters, Jolie Jones and Jordi Belair did the cover, which I really liked the cover. I thought that was really cool. Now, Batman and Wonder Woman have been in this mystery realm for decades by year 10 they like kind of kiss but then wonder woman lectures batman for some reason instead of banging it out they had to have banged after the three decades they were in there you gotta be kidding me so they're fighting this everlasting horde with moments of reprieve and batman says he misses his dog ace which everybody misses ace the bat hound and wonder woman misses her kangaroo jumpa and if i owned a kangaroo i would miss it too because kangaroos are really awesome but it's like a page long conversation seriously it's so dumb so catwoman is babysitting this guy the gentleman his name's julian and he has to go visit his wife or whatever for a little while and apparently she's a cop and i don't know this whole thing was stupid it was so boring and diana and catwoman have a moment where they talk and hug when they get back and oh my gosh so i guess they spent like 37 years in this other realm while only a few hours past our time and batman is led around by women through this entire thing the star of this book is catwoman that's what i've determined from this issue and previous issues catwoman is the star of the batman book she's the one that does all the masculine things She's a strong, independent woman. Batman relies on women telling him what to do. And uh, he just kind of like shuffles along with it. With this going nowhere storyline. Yeah, this is terrible. This is not a Batman book. I don't know what this alleged comic book is. It feels like feminist propaganda designed to emasculate men and 
drop the standards for what testosterone means to the human race. I don't know. This was boring. I feel stupider every time I pick up this book and I don't want to look at it at it anymore. Do not read this. It will in some way make you less of a human being and if you're a male you will feel less masculine for having gazed upon it. The art is beautiful. Do not read the words. It's like a printed version of the ring video. So I am not going to recommend recommend this and with that being said thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you liked the video hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing and as always we hope to see you on the next one Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at Batman issue 41. This is written by Tom King with Mikhail Janin on art and cover, Jun Chung on color, Clayton Cowell's letters, Oliver Copiel and Dave Stewart did the variant cover, and the editor was Jamie Rich. I like the cover, it's cool looking, dynamic. The rest of the book, however, that's another story. The art's okay, it's functional. I don't, I'm not in love with it. It looks a little bit more dynamite-ish, but whatever. So Batman man wakes up in a cold sweat and knocks out Alfred before going down to the bat cave and injecting himself and Selina with something or other. It's kind of a cool opening scene that should not have taken four pages to get to or more. Yeah, it took like six pages to get to that. And then there's a big two page spread where we figure out that Poison Ivy has everyone under mind control somehow, whatever. Then Batman wakes up next to Catwoman in their uniforms, so there must have been something freaky going on. And then Alfred, under the control of of Poison Ivy talks for a long time. Poison Ivy rambles on as these large panels and two-page spread go by, taking up lots and lots of room to over-explain a plot that we figured out seven pages prior. Okay, so she's got the whole world under her control, 7.6 billion people. There's no way to reverse it, and Batman doesn't know what to do. And then the issue ends. It took way too long to set this story up. This is being dragged out into a three-parter when it logically could have been a two parter at best. I'm waiting to see how Catwoman solves the problem for Batman because Batman is one of the dumbest human beings on the planet in this series as far as I could tell. I, I don't know. This is just... This was just kind of lazy. I think it was interesting from a plotting perspective, but from a story perspective, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be a three-parter when it's clearly a two-part story. So they're dragging it out, probably for the graphic novel. I don't know. I'm not real impressed with Tom King. This is soap opera stuff. If I wanted the, the general hospital or guiding light experience, I'm sure those repeats are available somewhere on the internet. I don't know. I wasn't real interested in reading part two, but we've got to because I already paid for it. So we'll look at the next issue but i would not recommend this one it had potential but it's way too epic of a story when it really didn't need to be and why does everybody know bruce wayne's identity like is he just not even trying to hide it anymore how does everybody seem to know he's batman so that that just kind of annoyed me but anyway uh i wouldn't recommend this one i would actively avoid it i'm not a huge fan of tom king so far he seems pretty lazy on his writing and it's just boring but that's just my opinion as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you like the video hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future reviews and we hope to see you on the next one Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we're looking at Batman issue 42. This is the second part of Everyone Loves Ivy. Written by Tom King with art and cover by Mikhail Janin. Jun Chung on colors. Clayton Cowell's letter. The editor was Jamie Rich. Batman and Selina are just kind of hanging out at Wayne Manor while the whole world is controlled by Ivy. Then they go out and have a sandwich while Superman follows them around. Then they go to somebody's house. Superman gets dropped by a whistle because Superman knows when to listen when not to dumb then Catwoman takes out three flashes while Batman stands around ho holding his junk or looking for it maybe then we learn that this kid's not at home and then Batman's hung upside down with Selina by Wonder Woman Jessica Cruz and Superman S Batman manages to get Superman mad or Ivy mad enough to have Superman hit him which seems to kill him uh, it messes him up it's a pretty gruesome looking scene but he's brought back by a combination of magic science and surgery and then Catwoman kind of takes over because she's Catwoman and he's just a dumb old man. 
They talk for a minute. Ivy apparently thought she had control over her powers. And this is some reference to War of Jokes and Riddles. And there's a lot of blah, blah, blah talking. Batman wakes up and realizes that his therapist for his head injury is, of course, Harley Quinn. Look, another woman. I think Tom King has some serious issues with women that need addressed. This issue was, again, something that could have been condensed down into half of an issue. Apparently, Batman figured out that it's in the food that's what's controlling everyone, but there's one kid in town that doesn't can't eat greenery because he's allergic to it. You know what? I know a lot of people that don't eat leafy greens. A lot. They're really fat people that eat at Burger King. You'd have a legion of Walmart shoppers at your disposal, Batman. A legion of them. People that don't eat green are a list of diabetes candidates worldwide. So that was a little silly that there'd be one person that can't eat what she's fixing or whatever. Okay, fine. Stupid. This story is stupid. Catwoman does most of the work. She talks like a millennial, like a hipster millennial. And it's really boring. Their entire dialogue dialogue is just Batman getting kind of like yes deared the entire time and then Catwoman has to take over talk to Poison Ivy. This is a Catwoman book. I don't know what I'm reading anymore. This is the most boring Batman series I've ever read. It's a soap opera version of Batman where there's very minimal action and I think that Tom King has issues with women. That being said, I'm not recommending this book. Uh, I thought it was a very weak story that could have been condensed down into two issues. Instead, it's being dragged out into three, probably for trade paperback purposes or just to get another paycheck. I don't know. All I know is it's boring and I don't like it. So I think that's going to do it for this one as always thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel if you like the video hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you never miss an episode and if you want to help the channel out throw me a dollar on patreon links should be in the description or on the about page and that would really help out with f future videos and getting some no more comics to review but as always we hope to see you on the next one Hello and welcome to another Bad Comic Review. This time we are looking at Batman issue 43, part of the 2016 Rebirth stories, written by Tom King, with art by Mikhail Janin and Hugo Petrus, Jun Chung on color, Clayton Cowles letter, and James Rich on editor. Alright, so, Jamie Rich, what are you doing? Why are you letting this crap fly? So, Catwoman and Poison Ivy are having a little chit-chat in the park for like half the book, and Batman, with his traumatic brain injury, he is sitting in the hospital for the re other half of the book. Batman insinuates that Harley and Ivy have some kind of relationship. I don't know if they're implying lesbians or just besties or I don't know what this is. But then Catwoman has this long drawn out conversation against some digital art where she then kicks the crap out of Poison Ivy in the most action packed scene in the whole issue. And that buys Batman like 15 seconds to try and snap Harlequin out of the mental trance which of course he does and then jumps out of a window with a traumatic brain injury and lands on his Batmobile which he somehow has access to and he also apparently has a machine that puts his pants on in the car okay and I assume Harley Quinn knows who he is in real life too because he had to have taken the bandages off in the car so then Poison Ivy talks her down there's some hugging and mild cheek smooching I don't know there's probably some hot scissoring action they cut out and we learn that Riddler lied to Poison Ivy at some point about some storyline that happened like 20 issues ago that is there's no real context given for that there's some sort of war between Riddler and Joker is all I've ever been able to gather it's ridiculous and they took our, our Ivy to somewhere called Sanctuary, which is part of the big crisis that's coming up. So I guess that's supposed to play into that. But otherwise, there's no context for what that is either. I only know that due to recent advertising. And then um, Batman and Catwoman make out a little bit. This was so boring. First of all, the whole storyline made almost no sense. Poison Ivy is vastly overpowered. And I don't know what I was supposed to get out of this. This was like watching a television a novella without subtitles. It was just weird and kind of boring. 
I, I would rather go back to college and listen to a monotone professor drone on about economics or something else that I don't care about for two hours than reread this garbage. It was so low energy, uninteresting nonsense that I don't even think the writer had any interest in what he was writing. I don't know why people like this book. I really don't. I keep waiting for it to get good like everybody tells me it is, but it's just, it, it's like um, boring people telling you about their vacation. That's how it feels. This is a book for boring people that don't know what action and or adventure is. I do not understand what this is and how this is getting past editorial. This is boring. Nothing happens except talking and relationship advice. I, I don't know what, what is I'm supposed to be getting out of this. this. This is mostly a Catwoman book. She seems to do everything. And she does the one hit or quit. So it's pretty short fights when she does do stuff. So I don't, I don't get it. But... I'm not recommending this. This is the most boring Batman series I've ever read. So I, I have to actively tell you not to buy this crap. I don't know why this is a, a Batman series. Not my thing. But with that being said, that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future reviews. And we hope to see you on the next one. Hello and welcome to another bad comic review. This time we're looking at Batman issue 44. This is the Rebirth series from 2016. This is written by Tom King with Mikhail Jane and Joelle Jones on art. Colors by June Chung and Jordi Belair. Clayton Cowles did letters and Jamie Rich was editor. Jamie Rich needs to be reprimanded for not doing his job because this is a stupid comic book. This is not a comic. This, well, it's first of all, it's a Catwoman book if it is a comic but it's really not it's just some rambling adventure of Catwoman breaking in and stealing a wedding dress and throughout it's interspersed with scenes of them in their old costumes interacting making really bad cat puns I don't know why I paid three dollars for this this was terrible it was it was a mess it was so boring why is this so boring stop being boring Tom King jeez I mean I understand by reading these that you have some sort of weird issues with women I, I get that I figured that out like five issues ago, but man, I don't know why this is all a Catwoman story in a book titled Batman. Is Catwoman going to become Batman? Is that what you're trying to get at? Is that what's really going on here? Because Batman doesn't seem to do anything and he seems pretty stupid. Like this issue, he can't figure out, you know, what her motivations are that she actually likes him. This is just dumb. Batman was barely even in this book. I'm buying a Batman book because I want to see some adrenaline action pack adventure story starring Batman not some girl breaking in and stealing a wedding dress and reminiscing about all the times that she played flirty and hard to get with her now fiance no this is this is stupid I don't know what this is but it's like a it's sort of like reading a therapy journal if you've ever read one of those I feel sorry for you because they're really boring and they're a lot like this only this is I don't know what this is anyway I'm not gonna recommend this just skip over anything in this rebirth series Series from what I could tell because this is not a Batman story. Alright, that's gonna do it for this one. We're gonna look at issue 45 next, which does have booster gold, so maybe it'll pick up. I have limited hope at this point, but that'll do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting the channel. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing so you don't miss any future reviews, and we hope to see you on the next one.